The Sports Time Podcast. Alrighty, I am pleased to be joined by Greg Hatlin of the Everybody Loves Racing Podcast. How's it going, Greg? It's going good. Thanks for coming on on late notice. Um, but let's first start off. Well, actually, um, before we start talking about NASCAR, uh, let's first start off with talking about your podcast. Um, I saw the podcast and I, I, it seems like you're almost any type of racing podcast, but I think you talk mostly about NASCAR. But if you want to tell us more about that for the listeners that don't know about it. Yeah, um, it, it basically was a podcast that we started on the fly. We're, um, like I said, we're, we're from um, Northern California and we're big Kyle Larson fans. So I, me and a coworker of mine decided to just start talking about NASCAR. Then we got a friend involved and the friend got his dad involved. And it started to just become a fun thing that we do every week where we talk all things NASCAR, all things sports. And it's just fun, to, a small net group, like the group of us talking about NASCAR. We, we're trying to involve it with different fans, get more people involved. And like I said, just talk, just spend every day, a couple of days talking about racing whenever we have time. It's, it's always fun to talk about NASCAR. Yeah. And actually it's kind of crazy because my grandpa was a huge NASCAR fan and back in the day, and he was actually a fan of Bill Elliott. And I think eventually he went to liking Casey Kane when Bill Elliott retired, but yeah, I've had, I've, um, for a while there, I was watching NASCAR. I kind of stopped a little bit. Then when I started doing the podcast, I started watching it again. So, um, speaking of Kyle Larson, you just mentioned it. He's been on a tear this year, what four or five races in a row, not, or if you count the all-star race, which doesn't really count in the point standings, but how come or how come he's had such a good season this year? Um, and were you expecting him to explode like this? You know, I mean, Kyle, I, I think most of us have figured Kyle Larson is one of the best drivers in the sport. And when he first came in, a lot of people were comparing him to a Jeff Gordon. And it was always the problem of the equipment that he's in. He's in a Chip Ganassi car, which Chip Ganassi is not known for their top level equipment. And I think when he got in the Chip Ganassi cars, you saw him getting the best out of the equipment that he was in. You saw in 2017, he got four wins. And it put it into comparison. Look at what Matt Kenseth did in that 42 car last year. Look what Ross Chastain is doing this year. Although coming off of a second place finish, you're still a see, you're seeing what the 42 car is capable of compared to what Kyle Larson was getting out of it. And I think Kyle Larson is just one of the best drivers in North America. We say it all the time on the podcast, how he drives people crazy. But... I think he finally is in the equipment that he he deserves, and you're seeing how good of a driver he is. And the, pro the problem I have is that people are saying this is a Hendrick thing, and that Hendrick is top right now. And there's some truth to it, but I mean, all these you see these four teammates, three teammates that Kevin or that Kyle Larson has, and he is beating all three of them week in and week out. He's He's way better than Chase Elliott, William Byron, and Alex Bowman. They may be all hot right now, but you're seeing the speed cover with Kyle Larson the most. Um, yeah, you just mentioned Chip Ganassi racing, and there's been rumors that Kurt Busch could leave after this year, and I guess there's also been rumors of him retiring as well. Um, do you think he'll be out of Chip Ganassi racing next season? I do. I think that they'll probably – I think I think 23-11 has got a lot of rumors going with Kurt Busch, and they could use a veteran like Kurt Busch to put with Bubba Wallace and – Maybe that's the next step you take with Bubba Wallace because you're seeing, I mean, they're a new organization who needs a veteran that knows the experience in NASCAR, knows how to get you to the next level. And who better than Kurt Busch? I mean, Kurt Busch is one of the smartest drivers out there, and he could really help push Bubba Wallace to the next level. Yeah, and it it's just kind of crazy with how well Kyle Larson has been this year. And, of course, Kurt Busch, what he hasn't won since uh, – it's been a while. Well, I guess he won at Vegas last year, yeah. but mm -hmm. he's been really quiet lately. And, of course, he won at Daytona back in 2018. But it would be fun to watch, especially if uh, Team 2311 could add another uh, FIA or another car to that field because I think, it, yeah, as you mentioned, it would really help Bubba Wallace. Um, speaking of Bubba Wallace, do you think he'll get a win this year? No. I, I – I, I, if it would, it'd be come from like a Talladega or a Daytona, something like that. Because, I mean, it's, as much as people knock up a wall, it's, it's it's really hard for these companies. And you see it year in and year out. You can't really go in the past and look at a new organization that came out. I mean, you saw Ray Evernham do it. And all these companies that just start an organization, it takes them a couple of years to become a suitable competitive car. I mean, I know that they got funding. I know they got Joe Gibbs equipment. But it's still, they're not quite there. They're still learning the pieces. And you you heard, because of the pandemic, they were working out of Mike Wheeler's shop at, at one point in the season. So, I mean, this is this is still a fluid progress for 2311 racing. So, I mean, 
I think eventually Bubba Wallace is going to be a competitive driver. I don't know how top level he is, but I think he'll eventually get a win. But I don't think it, I don't see it coming this year. Yeah, it'll definitely be exciting to uh, watch if he does get a win, at least what next year, because again, as you mentioned, it's going to be hard for him to win. Um, uh, the defending champ was supposed to have a really good season. It's been kind of a disappointment. I'm doing, he does have a win, uh, Chase Elliott, but um, he got DQ'd last week. Um, what do you think is the problem with Chase Elliott? And do you think he can win the cup again this year? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's necessarily a problem with Chase Elliott. I think his problem is his teammate right now. I mean, if you look at what Chase Elliott's had this year, he's had second, second, and then he got disqualified this week. But, I mean, he's been running good. He's just – I mean, it took him a while to get up to where he's at right now because at the beginning of the season he was kind of sputtering a little bit, had a good run at Martinsville, and then you saw him turn it on. I think a lot of people were wondering if he was kind of sandbagging, holding back a little bit for the playoff push like you saw last year. And this year, I mean, ever since – Ever since about Coda, you've really seen a different Chase Elliott. He turned it on and was finishing second, and he did it at Dover. And he's just been running into his teammate. I mean, Kyle Larson has been so hot. It's hard to be the best car when you got your teammate out there who's the best driver out in the field right now. With uh, Jimmy Johnson retiring last year, and it seemed like Chase Elliott was going to be the face of NASCAR, but right now it looks like Kyle Larson's going to be it. Who do you think has a better chance to be the face of NASCAR, Chase Elliott or Kyle Larson? You know, I've been wondering that for a while because this is, I've seen these two as pretty equivalent drivers for years. When he was in Ganassi, I, this was, Chase Elliott was always the guy I compared to Kyle Larson. And uh, right now, I think Kyle Larson is, there's really nobody who can touch him out there. It's, and it's crazy because, like, like I said earlier, they're in equal equipment. It's not now, it's no longer an instance of, well, Kyle Larson's in a Chip Ganassi equipment and Chase Elliott's got the Hendricks. Now they're in equal. Now you see him on an equal playing field, and Kyle Larson is just. I, I mean, it's not even comparable. I don't think. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked to me it looks like Kyle Larson is. And I'm trying not to be a homer here, but it looks like Kyle Larson is the, is the class of the Hendrick field right now. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. And that, like I said, Hendrick Motorsports has just been dominating this year. Alex Bowman and William Byron, I believe, both have two wins on the year. So it's uh, going to be... Uh, Byron's got one. And okay, Bowman has one. Two. Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. I got a little confused. So uh, another driver that I thought... I mean, does... Um, why do you think Denny Hamlet has not been able to take a checkered flag yet this year? Uh, that's the million-dollar question. The, him and Kevin Harvick. I mean, both of those two last year dominated the 2020 season. And we're halfway through the 2021 season, and here we are. Neither one have a win. And I know that Stuart Haas's reasoning, or at least the reason that they say, is because of the rule change that NASCAR's made after what they were finding in the rule book to, to give them a, an edge last year. And I think a lot of people are saying that's what Hendrick's doing right now, is they found the edge of the rule book, because that's what NASCAR is based off of, as much as people don't want to say it. I mean, you hear people like Dell Jr. say, so you hear say that, I mean, I, I don't want to say it, but they're cheating. I mean, at the end of the day, it's NASCAR is where whoever finds the, the gray area in the rule book the best is that's where you see the speed come from. And that's why in a season you'll see people go hot and then they'll go cold. And when NASCAR finds what they're doing, and I think that's what happened to Stuart Haas. Stuart Haas got busted what they were doing and it got shut down. Now you're not seeing them as competitive as they've been in the past. And they're a big organization. They're good. They're good. They'll get back to where they were. But for Denny Hamlin, um, you've seen Joe Gibbs just as a whole kind of take a fall back. I mean, besides a little bit of a run that Martin Truex has had here and there, he's fallen back a little bit. And, I mean, it's crazy to say because Kyle Busch seemed like the fourth best car at, at Joe Gibbs a couple of weeks ago. And now I think he's the best. And Denny Hamlin has such a good run at one point in the season that he is still the points leader. And I find that hard to believe. Because you've seen the run Kyle Larson had, but yet Denny Hamlin's still winning by 10 points. Yeah, it's crazy. And again, I think, well, and it's kind of crazy too. Denny Hamlin has yet to win a NASCAR Cup. I mean, he had a chance last year. I mean, he's had, or I guess he's had so many chances. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens toward the end of the stretch. Um, if we go, let's rewind back to last year. Um, Kevin Harvick dominated the whole season, and then he had some bad. Um, some bad luck, and he ended up not even placing the championship forward. Do you think NASCAR needs to change their playoff system? <laughs> okay, um, that that's a tough question because I, I was saying this in my last podcast was that it is so – when you're not a fan of the driver who dominated, like Kyle Larson at this point, if he were to lose the championship because 
because something happens in Phoenix. It, it, it would break your heart because he's probably the most deserving driver right now. I mean, Kyle, I mean, the way NASCAR has it set now, Kyle Larson can win every single race from here on out. And then if he loses in Phoenix, if something flu happens in Phoenix, he loses the championship. And I mean, it's, that sucks. I mean, it really does. And when, I know probably when you grew up too, when I grew up, it was the Winston Cup Series where it was based off of points where they would give a point system and it would be that way throughout the season. And you would know who the champion is two weeks before the championship races, which also sucks because then you're racing two races and the season's over. So, I mean, it's a fine line. NASCAR's got a tough situation there. I don't know what, I don't know what the right answer is, but I think either way you're going to get people not liking the result, especially if like last year, Kevin Harvick deserved to win the championship. Denny Hammond deserved to win the championship, but it was Chase Elliott, the wild card who turned it on hot or turned it on late in the season. So like I said, it's just, it's just a fluid situation. Either way, you're going to have people disappointed with it because the way it was suck, can suck and the way it is can suck. Yeah, I guess so. It's kind of a lose-lose situation because I think um, I think with Jeff Gordon had four cup championships and he could have probably won six or seven if the playoff system format wasn't in when he was racing. So, yeah, again, it's kind of a lose-lose situation. So did you want to think uh- it? add anything else to that yeah i i think you hit it right there a lot of i think a lot of the reason why they have these stand, these rules right now are because of how hot jimmy johnson was and how hot jeff gordon were in the 2000s that nascar said okay we got to do something because these guys are just dominating the races right now to where it's not even fun where you'd see these guys win the championship before the race was, was over and i know they went to the chase system in like 2004 with nextel and you just see every year they kept changing it to where at this point i just want to see them stay consistent because we saw the chase, then we saw the play, the tournament that they got now. Then they went with um, the stages. It's just I want to see them stick with one thing. If this is what they're going to go with, just let's stick with it. Let's roll with this. Stop changing things up. That's a problem I've had with NASCAR in the last couple of years. Is they try to change things up because they hear what people want on Instagram and Twitter, and it's just let's just stay with the way it is. Let's not make things confusing because it's very hard to understand right now. I try to explain it to people who don't really watch the sport. And it's hard to explain the stages and the points and the uh, the playoff points. And it's just really confusing. It's just, let's stick to one way and stop making this diluted. You just mentioned the stages and not a lot of the hardcore NASCAR fans were very excited about the stage they made a few years ago. Do you think they should keep that or do you think they should just get rid of the stages altogether? If they, I would have never been a fan of bringing it in. But since, like I said, since you brought it in, let's just stick with it. Let's let it play through because I'm tired of seeing all these changes that NASCAR makes to try to make the racing more interesting. I, I get what their purpose was because at the end of the day, the only race that matters, the only part of the race that matters is the last lap. So NASCAR wanted to change that a little bit and make make it break it into three segments to where there's more racing going on, more competitiveness, more reason to watch the whole entire race. And um, I think, People, I think the people are, they have a shorter int- attention span to where this is now more interesting if you're watching a shorter race broken up. But like I said, if it were me, if I were NASCAR, I would have never touched the way they had it. I thought that I thought that NASCAR was great the way we, when when I grew up watching it when it was just points racing the way Dale Earnhardt used to race, Richard Petty used to race. I mean that's that's the way that's the racing I like to watch. But like I said, they made it this way. They made their bed. Let's just lay in it. Let's do, stop changing it up every five years. Stop making it confusing. If, if you want to do stage races, I'll get, I'll get on board, but I just don't want to see this change every couple of years. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I think, yeah, they do need to make it more. They need to stay consistent because if you stay consistent, I think you'll keep fans and you'll gain other fans as well, which is ultimately what they want to do. Um, is there another driver um, that, no one's really talking about that you could see making a run and maybe even possibly winning the cup this season. They're they're always out there. I mean, there's always that guy like Chase Elliott that you could really see make a run. I'm I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I never, I never can give up on Denny Hamlin. I feel like Denny Hamlin's holding something back. Martin Truex is a wild card, but I, I just, I can't see it coming from anybody, but Hendrick or Joe Gibbs. I mean, to me, Penske, maybe a Joey Logano, but Ryan Blaney is kind of who Ryan Blaney is, I think, where he's a good driver, but I don't think he's going to be a top tier like that. And I think Brad Keselowski is kind of on his way out. I think that there's something to those rumors of him going to Roush Fenway. And I think that's kind of you, – you know how it is. When the drivers have a new deal, you kind of see them fall back a little bit because they're they're let out of the 
of what's going on, the fluid situation, because I think he's moving on to, to a new organization. And, and I think that's kind of where Brad Kozlowski is right now. Um, speaking of Brad Kozlowski, who do you think will replace him if he does leave Team Penske? I think the right. I think they'll probably put the two car. I think they'll get that two car to Austin Singer, and I think they'll keep Matt DeBenedetto in the twenty one. Which man, that that would be the the best thing for Matt DeBenedetto because I think it's it's not pretty if he goes into free agency this year with no no funding, no spon- like no sponsors. He's not winning races. I don't know who really would want to take a chance on him. I know he's got a big fan base, which blows me away that he has no funding. Because you would think the fact that he's got a solid fan base, he could find some sponsorship. But it's just been a problem that's cursed Matt Vendetto his whole career. He, I mean, he's such a likable guy, such a nice guy. And he, I mean, he's finished second, I think, three or four times and just can't punch that ticket, can't get the win. And he's a 15th, 16th place driver. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, drivers make their careers off of being like that. But, I mean, you have to have funding. And I, and he doesn't. And it's, I'd be really concerned for if Matt Vendetto becomes a free agent. Yeah, we'll definitely be pulling for Matt Dedebento. Um, there's one guy that are really that's not quite in the Cup Series yet that I think will be a star, and that is Ty Gibbs, Joe Gibbs' grandson. I mean, it's, what, his first time he runs in the Xfinity Series, he wins. Um, do you think he'll win a few Cups once he gets into that into that series when he gets older? Absolutely. That, guy, that guy's the future of NASCAR. I know exactly who you, where you were going when you said that. Um yeah, I, I haven't seen a kid like this in a while. I mean, I, I, like I said, I've watched NASCAR for 20-something years now, and I can't remember seeing a guy like Ty Gibbs come out of the Xfinity program like this. And I mean, like you said, this is his first season. He isn't. This isn't even a full-time season. And when he races, you're seeing him competitive week in, week out. And I, I, I think the the ceiling or the ceiling is his potential. I mean, he's got, like you said, he's got that spot. He's going to get in with a company like. Joe Gibbs. I mean, his grandpa is Joe Gibbs, so he'll get in. He'll find his way into the sport. He'll probably do a year or two in cut or an Xfinity before he moves on to cut. But man, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch what his career does. I mean, I, the, the fans glommed on to him like none other. I mean, people love love Ty Gibbs, and it's great to see because the the thing that NASCAR lacks a lot is that superstar in NASCAR where people want to go see. Where you're like, oh my god. He races in the series, and it used to be Dale Jr. People used to really want to go to the sport to see Dale Jr. And it's kind of Bubba Wallace now, but when you go, when you don't follow NASCAR, then you go to a NASCAR event to see Bubba Wallace. It's kind of a letdown. But with a guy like Ty Gibbs, I think if Ty Gibbs reaches the potential that I think a lot of us see for him, I think this is this is going to be a big thing for NASCAR. This is a big ticket for NASCAR right here to get a guy like Ty Gibbs to reach the potential. And I like like I said, I really think he will because. He's got his grandpa, who's the owner of a top tier organization in NASCAR. The only problem is, where's he going to ride? Because you only are allowed four charters per team. And they've got Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, and um, Christopher Bell, who's who they see a lot of potential for. So where are you going to find a spot in there? Maybe it's a 2311 who's got uh, – they could find a spot for him because they'll, they're will they basically a um, united charter there. they got to – they got an organization commitment to with each other right there. So maybe they can put him into a 2311 car or maybe, a, maybe a Denny Hamlin or Mark Church retires because again, they are 40 something years old. So maybe they do back out, but that that's for the future. But man, I, I really see big things for Ty Gibbs. Yeah. It's just so crazy with how young he is and yet he's able to win like his first Xfinity series race. That was just crazy, especially at Daytona. So again, it's been, I think I can't wait to watch once he gets up there. And even I, you could probably see him what running a few times in the cup series because before he comes, becomes full time. So uh, it will definitely be fun to watch um, him and his career. So as we end the interview again, thanks for coming on. Um, Is there anything else you have in store for your podcast, all that? So the listeners can know more about it. Yeah, no, we're we're working on a lot of things right now. We're working, like I said, it's our first year doing the podcast. We're still working, working out the glitches a little bit. And um, we're working on getting Kyle Larson on the show right now. Uh, one of one of my um, one of the co-hosts grew up with Kyle Larson's mom. Like I said, that's the fun thing. We're all different ages. We got twenty. I'm twenty five. Uh, my my co-host is thirty two. We got one that's sixty five. We're all different ages. We've seen all different eras of NASCAR, so it's a lot of fun. And he, like I said, he grew up with Kyle Larson's mom, so he know he's got a connection. So we're working on getting Kyle Larson on the show, which would be a lot of fun. And uh, we got a lot of fun things planned, so I look forward to doing 
more, doing the podcast more and uh, having some fun talking about NASCAR. That is super exciting, especially if you can get a guy like Kyle Larson that's just on fire right now. And maybe most likely at the, now he's going to win. Um, before we end the interview, um, do you have a prediction on who will win uh, the cup this season? It's probably Kyle Larson, yeah. but uh-uh. one- I, I'm a pessimist at heart, man. As much as I'm a Kyle Larson fan, like I said, I'm from Northern California. That makes me a Sacramento Kings fan. I know how bad things are. Uh uh, Kyle Larson can win every single race from here on out, uh, and I'm not picking Kyle Larson to win the championship. Things don't go good for me, okay? Um, but I, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's gonna come from a guy like uh, man. You put me on the spot. I, Chase Elliott could be a guy to watch, and obviously Kyle Larson is the guy that I think a lot of people are saying right now is expected to win. But NASCAR is a 36 week season. You're gonna see Hendrick drop down a little bit. You're gonna see teams come up to their level. It's just, it's a long season. Teams are going to figure things out. And at the end of the day, I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to go with a guy who is better in leadership and a championship. I'm going to say Mark Truex Jr. wins championship this year. All right. Thanks for coming on. Um, it was great talking NASCAR. We haven't talked about NASCAR for a while, so this was great. Um, again, check out the podcast, Apple podcast, Spotify. Um, where can we find you on social media? Is it just Instagram or where else can we find you? Yeah, I'm just on Instagram right now. Um, it's it's at Everybody Loves Racing. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming on. And um, definitely hope the rest of the NASCAR season is as exciting as it was in the or in the early of the season. So thanks for coming on again. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening to the Sports Town Podcast or the STP Pod for short. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and much more. Also, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Sportstown Podcast. If you want to check out more videos of the Sportstown Podcast, click on the right.